Hey, welcome back, friends. Today I want to walk you through how I built this thing here. Like, this is of course just a sketch on paper about the object that it's supposed to represent. It's going to be a stand for two aquariums with these nice curvy table legs here, because I think Art Nouveau died out way too quickly and should have had more time. Okay, off to work. The tabletop is going to be made of plywood, and this tank that's supposed to go on top of it used to be uh, the bottom part of a gerbil enclosure. Now that's a nice rectangle here. The rest of the construction will be made from boards like these ones here. This is elm wood, which my grandfather used about 50 years ago to make most of the furniture for my parents' first apartment when they moved in here. I had to remove a few nails and cut around some holes, but most of it was really still in absolutely prime condition. This time again, this is all looking very straightforward and easy, but let me be honest, this is actually my third attempt to build the thing. As you may know from the last video, I'm very new to carpentry and furniture making and all that woodworking stuff, and I keep trying out methods that are way too complicated. For instance, my first attempt at joining these pieces was with a tongue and groove system, which I would cut on the table saw. Because master cabinet makers on YouTube make that appear easy. Now in the end, I came, ended up using this method here, which is really simple. Bunch of holes, bunch of wooden pegs. There, white wood glue, great. Now my favorite tool of all, rubber hammer. It's made to hit things without the intent of destruction. I let everything sit in clamps overnight and then proceeded to cut out the rough shape. I used the hole saw for the sharper corners and then the jigsaw for the rest of the shape. At this stage the pieces looked like this. I then proceeded to take down whatever kind of paint Grandpa had painted the stuff with and ended up with this really fresh looking wood. And then I, sh I shaped these organic curves mostly with hand tools. I also used an angle grinder, but found that too difficult to control. Using that rusty old file was actually what I enjoyed most, I think. I remember thinking back uh, to elementary school or so, when we made boomerangs, and it was mostly about filing plywood. It gives you great control over the actual shape you want to achieve. Well, I do have a router, actually. But I thought this would, this would look a lot cooler if it had this um, organic shape, truly organic shape. Here, some more wooden pegs. Now this looks good, doesn't it? Mm. And here you can see the thing almost finished, not yet stained and painted. Now I needed a glass cover for the tank. So I had to cut one glass plate to size and... Well, I'm not a professional glass cutter. Luckily, it did work out in the end, though. So the bottom tank you see here is a standard 54 liter size, and these wooden pieces that are supposed to carry the glass plate later on are cut from the same kind of wood and then shaped with the angle grinder. That was, that was a bit of dangerous fun there to do that, but it worked out nicely, I think. I looked and searched all over the place for used lamps that would fit this piece here. But I ended up getting new ones from a big Scandinavian furniture company that we had gift cards for. Since a friend of ours works at that place and could get those lamps a bit cheaper, and they were cheap to begin with, I thought, yeah, that's an okay exception from the garbage rule. Now here, in the finished piece, you can see that this left half is quite a bit darker than the right. That's because these lamps need a little tweak that I will walk you through quickly here. What we need is a piece of cardboard, preferably the thin, rather wobbly kind, and then some rumpled tinfoil. You can also use t new tinfoil, but old tinfoil is just as good. And of course there's more than enough of the stuff flying around. Now straighten that out, take your trusty scissors and cut a half circle from the piece of cardboard. Wonderful, you can just guess the size. Turn it into a cone shape, fix with tape of your choice. 
none of this has got to be pretty, nobody will ever notice. Now when the whole thing is somewhat sturdy, cut a hole in the tip. That's important to have a hole there. That's where the bulb goes. And maybe do some trimming around the edges. And then, really carefully, like Total Pro, just stuff the tin foil into the thing. Really, it doesn't have to look professional at all. Because nobody's ever going to look at that. Blop. Wonderful. Thing done. And here's how you install it like a pro. You remove the bulb from the lamp, stuff the thing in there, screw the bulb back in, and ta-da, done. This is a 4500 Kelvin 4 watt LED and this is what it does with a piece of rumpled tin foil. And now that's it for this week. I hope you enjoy this piece of furniture as much as I do. <laughs> See you around. 